What are the things that make Saskatoon a great city to live, work, play, and buy real estate in? Megan Shep with Boychuk Realty joins us today to talk about the top five reasons why Saskatoon is a great city. Hope you enjoy. You're listening to the Saskatchewan Real Estate Podcast, where we chat with real estate experts from across the province to learn what's happening in the real estate market. Here's your host, Ron Caroni. Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Ron Caroni. This is the Saskatchewan Real Estate Podcast and really happy to highlight one of Saskatchewan's biggest cities today with Saskatoon Realtor, Megan Shep. Megan, welcome. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm more than happy to have you on. Megan, before we get into talking about Saskatoon, we'd like to hear a little bit more about you and how you got into real estate. Can you break down a little bit of your backstory for us? You bet I can. So my name is Megan Shep, the realtor with the last name you can say, but definitely can't spell. I am weeks away from starting my fourth year in real estate at Boychuk Realty in Saskatoon. Uh, prior to this, I ran a very successful eight-year painting company. So not only do I know about real estate, but I know a thing or two about paint. And I'm really excited to be here today. <laughs> Wonderful. So as you're doing your walkthroughs, you know exactly how to tell people, oh, no, that's eggshell, that's off pearl, you know. I love nothing more than when someone brings up a painting comment because <laughs> I got you covered there. Wonderful. Well, we're not ma mainly focusing on paint today. What we're talking about, uh, the top five reasons that uh, Saskatoon is a great place to live uh, with a real estate focus. So let's get right into it, Megan. And uh, starting with number one, what do we have? Number one, I'd say would be our synchrotron. Okay. What about the synchrotron uh, helps make Saskatoon a place that kind of puts it on the map? So, I mean, as a Canadian light source, um, it's really crucial here for our scientific community that we have one. We've got global interest in our synchrotron and it's in such high demand. Um, usually it carries like a one to two year or more wait list to it. And I think that's really imperative to hear in Saskatoon. So even from a real estate a real estate side, Megan, uh, that probably has a lot of draw for people to come here that's renting, housing, different things like that as well. Exactly. I mean, when the opportunity is not elsewhere and, and you can only find it in Saskatoon, um, you've got no choice but to come here, I guess, and be stuck with us. That's awesome. Okay. So number one, the synchrotron. Uh, number two, what are we looking at? Our academic hubs, our schools, our U of S and our polytechs. Okay, what are some of the major programs that would kind of draw people in or what would be the reason that students would choose these institutions? So I may be a little biased as I'm a US, U of S graduate myself, um, but we've got programs here that uh, you can only find in Saskatoon, uh, like not offered elsewhere. So like we've got our vet schools, uh, our medicines, our dentistry, like we are a huge um, academic hub here in Saskatoon. And when it comes to real estate, we see it with the flood of parents almost every summer looking to invest if there's their kids are going to be here four to eight years, depending on their program. Uh, much, much better opportunity to purchase something than to help pay for the rent for that long. So our, our summers tend to get flooded with uh, the parents from outside Saskatoon. What are those typical properties looking like, Megan? Is it usually just a two bedroom condo that is purchased or is there sometimes houses involved when you're talking about parents coming in buying homes for their for their kids? Personally, I find it's a combination of townhomes and or half duplexes. You mm -hmm. tend to get a lot of opportunity to skip condo fees that way, still get three bedrooms. Uh, so if their kids are coming with friends or they've got future siblings that might come, there's enough bedrooms to kind of house everybody versus just a limitation of, say, like a two bedroom condo. Kids can make friends on campus, throw a renter into the home. So that tends to be my my niche personally is either like a half duplex or like a townhouse direction. And a good opportunity after that to move the property or keep it as a rental if they so should choose. Exactly. Yes. Awesome. All right, Megan, moving on to number three on our list. I'd say we are a city of continuous growth. So Saskatoon has uh, been the benefactor of people moving here for a long period of time. And yes. when you look at it, we do have a high rate of growth. What are some of the things that tie into that? Or, or do we have any reasons why Saskatoon just continues to grow? I mean, I, I suppose we continue to grow because we have the opportunity to do so. When you have the demand, um, you go with the demand, right? I mean, look at our newer neighborhoods. We've got uh, Evergreen seems to have just finished and now we're already... Uh, Aspen Ridge is now a few phases into it and Brighton took off like a light and we've got Kensington now growing and even our Warman and Martinsville 
everyone continues to joke that a couple more years, there, there's not going to be much uh, left between us before all of a sudden we're going to be ba- essentially neighborhood neighbors with them. Like we are continuously new neighborhoods and it seems like our homes are just uh, going up so quickly lately. I've seen a little bit of the development in Brighton and the plans for that area over the next 20 and 30 years. And it's really exciting to see that continued growth in Saskatoon and some of the amazing homes and properties and businesses that kind of all roll into that. Definitely, definitely. And it seems to never stop. And uh, there's like, that's where people want to be is those kind of neighborhoods. So we're talking about the top five reasons why Saskatoon is a great place to live with a real estate focus. Uh, Moving on to number four, Megan, what do we have? Restaurants. (laughs) Okay, so uh, I guess first off, we'll do a personal choice here. What is your, uh, some of your favorite restaurants in Saskatoon? Oh, goodness. I'm a big keg fan. I love a nice dinner out at the keg. Uh, Las Palapas is Mm. is a go-to for coconut shrimp. You can't miss it there. And, and so more broadly speaking, Megan, when we're talking about Saskatoon restaurants, uh, you wouldn't think of Saskatoon as maybe this hub for food, but it might make sense that a lot of food is made here, grown here. Uh, just talk about the restaurant scene and why Saskatoon makes it so. So we seem to have lucked out on being like per capita, the largest amount of restaurants. And if you weren't aware, we are also per capita, the highest amount of Tim Hortons. So if you're a coffee fan as well, um, Tim's is never that far in Saskatoon. I mean, we're one of the only places with a pierogi drive through. So, I mean, when it comes to Saskatoon, our, our eating scenery, our going out scenery, like we've got a lot of opportunity to choose from. We've got a lot of palettes to, to fit here in Saskatoon. And I guess we just became the city that eats. Maybe it's because yeah. we're feeding so many students. I guess if it's minus 30 over a period during the winter, you say, well, what should we go out and do? Like, well, maybe let's go get a coffee or a bite. Yep. Yeah. What else is there to do, I guess, than to go out for dinner? I know that's where a lot of my monthly budget goes. On the on the Tim Hortons note, it sometimes makes it hard to meet people because if you say, well, let's just meet at Tim Hortons. And if you're saying uh, which which of the 15 or 13 are are, are we meeting at? So. Exactly. Yeah. But there's never one very far. Uh, moving on to number five, Megan. Attractions are lakes. Oh, OK, so would that be if we were going to go way up north? Are we staying fairly close to home? Are you encompassing? all of that in the ability to to kind of be able to act as Saskatoon as the hub, whether you're going to, you know, Waska Sioux, which seems like a far distance away. Uh, but as far as, you know, if you were in Vancouver, if you were driving to, you know, Whistler, it, it yes. might be a, a fairly similar distance. I would agree. I would say we're very fortunate here as like what I, I see as the hub to getting to lakes within a two hour drive, almost any direction, um, you, you've got something, right? So whatever your taste in lake is, big or small, or whatever direction you tend to go, we're surrounded by lakes. And I find in our summer, especially July, um, we're almost a bit of a ghost town on the weekends. Uh, at least I felt it on the golf course Friday and Saturday night. Um, we're pretty quiet. And I think it's because we're a community of, it doesn't take you very long in your six degrees of separation of your circle that someone's got a cabin at a cabin, family has a cabin, uh, or a lot of us in Saskatoon, uh, our five-year plan, 10-year plan is to own a cabin um, if if we so choose. And I think that's just because that's where we go in the summers. That's where we spend our times is up at the lake. It's kind of a Saskatchewan secret because if you ask someone who's not from here, they would say that Saskatchewan's boring and flat and not that yes. interesting. But once you kind of get near Prince Albert and you start getting into that boreal forest, then you're just seeing this uh, mass amount of wildlife, plants, and beautiful crystal clear waters. It is a huge attraction. And one of the reasons why a lot of Saskatchewan people do not travel anywhere outside of province during the summer. Yeah, because it's just not necessary. We've got everything we need within a quick drive. And if you are in a more a bigger hub, I find like a two hour drive doesn't really get you quite as many opportunities as come Saskatoon, our, our surrounding perimeter, like you've got a lot within two hours. Yeah, no doubt about it. So Megan, we've gone over five, but I'll give you the opportunity. Is there any others that you'd like to touch on here? Any bonus uh, additions to why Saskatoon is a great place to live? 
So what I would say based on how, what we have to offer that other larger cities don't is we've got an um, amazing opportunity for people at a younger age to invest. Mm. It's just not an option in places like Vancouver, Victoria, Toronto, Ottawa. Um, it, to think that you could own a property in your late 20s, early 30s is, is kind of a, jo a joke in those cities. It just wouldn't be possible. But we've got a very unique opportunity here in Saskatoon that our younger demographic can and because of that they do um because of that we do have parents that help kids invest uh and we've got people investing at a younger age and we i find because of that we tend to stay longer because you create roots here right you've got a reason to stay you've got security here and you just don't find that um in in every city so i find that's that's unique to us and a, a massive bonus to us here i i have a friend who lives in the chilliwack area of bc and both he and his partner are full-time professionals and they cannot afford a home there. Uh, mm -hmm. Whereas in Saskatoon, if both you and your partner are full-time professionals, you can almost buy in any area of the city that you would like. And the ability for home ownership here is a really incredible thing. Uh, when you do talk to your friends in Vancouver and Toronto and without having uh, either a collective where you know yeah. two families are buying a home together or you're getting a lot of help from mom and dad, sometimes home ownership is not a possibility in those cities. So I really like that, Megan. Yeah, I've got a great friend actually who's a realtor out in Victoria. And it's funny, every couple of weeks, we always seem to catch ourselves on the phone catching up. And just the demographic and what we both shop for and who we help is very different because it's just um, not people his his age out there were the same age. They're just, they're not shopping with him, right? It's It's a very different time frame of when to expect when home ownership is almost expected out sure. in Victoria than it is uh, here. Yeah, a, a great point. Thanks for that, Megan. And uh, we're coming down to the end of our questions here. And a question I like to ask folks is if you could give yourself some advice, if you could go back in time, so whether this is at the beginning of your real estate career, or much earlier, what advice would you give yourself? Fail quick and fail, uh, fail big learn fast and, and move on from it. I like that. Yeah, because through failures, we often learn the most. And if you're learning, you're, you're obviously moving forward. So that's a really great one. Uh, exactly. Megan, if folks want to get in contact with you, if they have a question about buying a home, if they would like to elaborate more on you with why Saskatoon is such a great place to live, uh, how can they get in contact with you? Best ways to reach me personally at my cell at 306-713-2559. Um, you can find me at Boy Chuck Realty as well. Awesome. Megan, you were a delight to interview. Thank you Thank so much. Thank you so much. Your, uh, your five things and bonus that makes Saskatoon a great place to live. I really appreciate your, your time and expertise on this subject. Thank you again for having me. Thanks again to Megan for joining us on the program today. Really appreciate her knowledge and expertise. If you're in the home buying process in Saskatoon, feel free to reach out to her and uh, gain some experience on Saskatoon and area. If you enjoyed this episode, hit the like and subscribe button. Until next time, I'm Ron Caroni, your Saskatchewan mortgage professional. This has been the Saskatchewan Real Estate Podcast. If you like this episode, find more information and episodes on our Facebook and YouTube pages. If you'd like to be a guest or have a conversation you'd like to learn more about, let us know by messaging the show on Facebook. Thanks for listening.